Today I'm going to talk to you about the Requisition and Purchase Order Workflow capability in Microsoft Dynamics GP 2015 R2. The first thing I'm going to show you is the workflow setup. To access that, you go to Microsoft Dynamics GP, Tools, Setup, Company, Workflow, and Workflow Maintenance. As you can see, we're in the Purchasing module. There are other workflows available for financial, sales, payroll, project, and administration as well. Today we're going to focus on purchasing and the purchase requisition approval. When I expand this, you can see that I have several different workflows set up out here. However, you can only have one active one at a time, and the active one is designated by the check mark. When I click requisition approval, you can see I have managers here. If I click the uh, magnifying glass, you can see that I have put specific people in here. You can also use Active Directory groups and you can also use workflow groups. The easiest way is to set up Active Directory groups for the people who are going to be approving. So now I'm going to go to the step. So this is the workflow that I've set up under Purchase Requisition Approval. And as you can see, there's several options here. You can see that it's marked active. You can, um, here I can tell it what notifications that I want to send. If I check this and then click the blue arrow, then you can see all the, the t points in the workflow that you can send a notification email. The also, the nice thing is you can change these emails based on what um, what level of approval is over here. And those are total cu totally customizable um, in GP. These are the ones that are actually just the stock ones, the WF Action Completed. And it should be pulling up the message screen. So in here is the message setup. And as you can see, I can have many different types of messages and the one we're looking at now is um, the completed approval but you can go let's go to the assign PO approval so here you can see it says you have a task assignment for a purchase order PO number so what that's going to do is going to insert the actual PO number there you can customize these to have whatever information that you want your people to be able to see when they get an email saying they have something to approve. So this is a really nice feature and um, you can get pretty granular with the information that it sends in the email. For today we're just going to use the WF Action Completed message. You can allow approver to delegate tasks. So if an approver gets something and they need it to go to someone else because they're not familiar with the, uh, the requisition, they could delegate it to another person. Uh, allow originator to be the approver. I have this turned on today for demo purposes, but typically you probably would not want the originator to be the approver. Uh, always require at least one approver. And then you can also use an alternate final approver. The bottom section talks about when a task is overdue. Do we want to take no action? Do we want to escalate to the next approver, escalate to a specific person, or automatically reject the overdue task? So now I'm going to expand the workflow itself and show you the steps. So this step is called all POs over $100, and it's an approval type. So what I want it to do is take this action if the following condition is met and I'm going to show you the condition by clicking the blue arrow. So here I have it where purchase requisition work dot document amount is greater than 100. You can stack these conditions by using and ors and you also have uh, other fields that you can select from. So you could select from by ship to city if you you know, did some kind of territorial approval. You can do site ID, which is by warehouse. So there's many different criteria that you can use here to um, direct your document to where you want it to go. 
So for this, we just have when purchase orders um, document amount is greater than 100, who it's going to go to. And I'm going to go ahead and assign it to the workflow manager. And the time limit is eight hours. So if this is not approved within eight hours, it'll go back and look at whatever rules you had down here for the task overdue. Apply workflow calendar means, um, does, do you want it to look at the workflow calendar you set up? There is a workflow calendar that you can tell it what your hours and days of work are, what your holidays are. So that way it only uses business hours as opposed to just eight hours from the time the requisition came in. And then what message would you like to send? For this, uh, we're gonna send the WF assigned PO rec approval. And if I check this box, if I have an attachment that I attach to the transaction, it will actually include that document as well. And here you can tell it if only one response is needed, the majority must approve or all must approve. So because I have this set to workflow manager, and when we look over here, we have um, four people if we have that set to all, then all four of us would have to approve. So you have that capability as well. The majority, then three people would have to approve. So in this case, we're gonna do only one response needed. So once my workflow is set up, I'm going to go enter a requisition and show you um, the, the email. Now I'm in the um, classic client here. There's also with 2015, a really nice uh, web client. And the, the good thing about this is you can buy self-service license for the web client, which only allows them access to uh, enter the requ enter requisitions. There's also some other payroll features that come along with that self-service um, payroll type functions. For today, we're gonna look at the purchase recs. So this is the web client. I'm going to enter the purchase requisition screen. And for these purposes, they, they're not forced to pick a vendor or an item because at the requisition point, they probably don't know that information. Your buyers would be the ones that would typically go and um, pick the vendor based on, you know, price breaks or, or, you know, favorite vendors or things like that. So at this point, the person entering the requisition really just has to put in um, a description if they want to and um, the date these are user defined fields that we haven't defined but you can set these user defined fields to mean something for you and here you can just put in whatever they want if they do know the item number from the inventory they can do the lookup and look up your actual items but for this purposes we're just going to say we want pins we are going to order a hundred, well, let's do a thousand, and we're going to order, they're a dollar a piece. And they may not know the unit cost at that time either, but um, typically, you know, they'll put that, this information in there. Then they'll select the site ID, which is the their site. And once they're finished with that, that's all the information they need, they can click Submit. When they click submit, they will get a pop-up that says, please approve, need pins, whatever they want to put in there, and click submit. Okay, so once that's submitted, the email will be sent out to the workflow managers, which is the four that I showed you all ago. And it should pop up in here. So this is one that I did earlier. And you'll see it has the rec number. It has approve, reject, or delegate. And then down here, you can see all the information that I put in. So it has the document amount, uh, quantity ordered, who, who requested it. This was, happens to be the self-service user. Um, and then 
I can, if they're logged into GP at the time and they click this, uh, the actual number, then it will actually bring them into the screen and open up the rec so they can look at it. So they could look at it in more detail. If um, they don't need to look at it, they can just approve, reject, or delegate right here from the screen. So when they click approve, it's going to pop open a window. And they can put a comment in here. And they can click approve. And then the person who actually entered the rec will be able to see right here if they pull it back up, that um, it's it was pending approval. So I'm going to go in and pull that one back up again so that you can see that it shows you that it's been approved. So 28 was the one I just approved, and you can see that it's been completed. The nice thing about this is you can click View History, and you can see all the steps. And we only had one step, uh, it was submitted and approved, but you might have multiple steps in your workflow. So at any time they can open this and actually see where it is in the process. So that one's approved. Once it's been approved, then they can go and turn it into a, a purchase order. Okay, so once the requisition has been approved, then it is uh, available to actually be um, generate a purchase order from that. So we also have a purchase order approval. So this can go is another workflow that it will go through once the vendor has been added and the actual item and the um, the distributions and everything else that needs to be added by someone in the purchasing department. So we're going to review the purchase order approval. This one I have POs over 1,000 and um, the approval is set to when the subtotal is greater than a thousand. So we're going to show you this workflow. So this purchase order you can see is uh, has been completed. The requisition has been completed. So we're going to go to actions and purchase. And what that's going to do is bring it up and allow us to, cr to turn this into a purchase order. And it tells us everything that we need to do here. So we need to select a vendor. And then we need to pick a site ID. And then at this point, we can generate a purchase order. It's going to create a, create a report for us showing that we are turning this requisition into a purchase order. And then we can go into the purchase order entry screen and review. So I'm going to pull up a purchase order here. Okay, so this one hasn't been, been submitted yet. It's going to be a standard purchase order. Just going to start another purchase order. This is demo data we're working with, so 
sometimes we have funky stuff going on. So I'm going to pick a vendor. I'm going to pick an item. I'm going to purchase 10 of them for a specific site. And then I'm going to submit to the workflow. I can type a message and I can click submit. So once that is actually submitted, it's going to generate um, the email. is right here and you can see that PO2097 has been submitted and we should be getting another one that pops up that is going to allow me to approve those. Sometimes there's a little delay in the email while we're waiting on that, I'm going to go in and pull that PO back up and you can see that it's a pending approval. And I can view the history. And see that it's still pending approval. Once she approves it, then it'll be final and then we can actually, um, that PO will be available to receive against. So that's kind of how the PO workflow works. Very similar to the requisition workflow. And you can get pretty detailed in your rules as far as, you know, if it's this amount or over, then you send it to this person. If it's, you know, above that amount, then it's going to go to another group of people. Um, you can also set um, certain sites to go to certain people. So if your warehouse managers have to approve stuff, then you can set it up by site. So it is a, a great function and um, that was added to this version of GP. And please feel free to um, send us any questions if you need some further assistance with this. Thank you. Thank you.